So what is wrong with this integral? Why it's not proper? What do you think? Vertical asymptote where? At one. So European notation I will show you, we put in the circle a problematic location. If it's on the edges, you can circle it. Americans don't do it, but I like it because then it visually shows the problem. Infinity is visual, but if there's no infinity, at least we can circle where is the problem. Bless you. So have a sketch of the interval. We are working on from zero to one, but there is a vertical asymptote at one because if you plug one, you'll have division by zero. It's a vertical asymptote. Thus, you need to work with limits. Remember I mentioned before, when you want to approach uh, something, but uh, it's dangerous to be at that point, you use limits because limits allow you to approach as close as possible without actually hitting that moment. So we're going to have integral from zero. Choose any letter. What letter do you like? B. Well, we did B last time. Anything else? M. You say M. M, let's do M. M goes to 1. 3 over square root 1 minus x squared dx. We're going to be integrating this, pretending it's definite integral and it's good. And at the end, we're going to plug, we're going to use limits. So limit allows me to approach vertical asymptote as close as I want. The only problem, we don't approach it in this case from both sides. The limit, the way I wrote it right now, means approaching from both sides. If you remember calculus one, the first two weeks, the first week actually, we teach left limit and right limit. This is how you should see it. I'm working from zero and I'm approaching one from the left. Remember, it's in English, it says from the left. Then it's minus. I'm putting minus over here. Minus means from the left. So people confuse left means to the left or from the left. Just remember, from the left, that's minus. From the right, that's plus. That means I'm approaching using numbers smaller than one. Zero point, I can actually write it down. 0 0.9, 0 0.9999999. And I will never reach one. So I'll be always smaller than one. Now you see we're reviewing integration for you before the first exam, which is perfect. Limit is keep waiting. M is going to one from the left. But what is the integral of three over square root one minus x squared? Preparation for the exam, what is that? Inverse what? Sine, do you remember that? Remember formulas, people like no idea. Well, try to review before the test. It's three arc sine of x. And then there will be a bar, 0 and m. I want to skip this step. So I'm going to plug m right away, top, minus the bottom, 3 arc sine, 0. What is arc sine of 0? Zero? 0. It basically asks the question, uh, sine of what angle gives you 0? There are many of them, but on the restricted domain, it's 0. So we just end up to have limit m goes to 1 from the left, 3 arc sine m. This is a limit from the calculus 1. Not necessarily, not everyone had it. And now we don't know if you remember how to work with arc sine and blah, blah, blah. But basically the question is, you can see it this way. So m is not a constant. n is a moving variable that approaches one from the left. You can see this question as so. Sine of what angle gives you one, but also not equals, it's approaches. Sine of what angle approaches one from the left? Pi over two. So if we are correct, the answer will be three, because there was three in front of it and then pi over 2, which is 3 pi over 2. You can also see it from the graph. If you plot the function, not arc sine, by the way, you're plotting the original function, y equals 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared, the graph looks like so. And it has a vertical asymptote. 
Usually it's a dashed line in notation, and the vertical asymptote happens at one. As you can see, we don't approach it from the right. We only approach the vertical asymptote from the left. VA x equals one. So where does it happen? It happens at three pi over two. Uh, no, integral, the area, that's what I was saying. This whole area actually is a finite number and it is approximately three, well, not approximately, actually, exactly three pi over two. Why it's happening? Because the function hugs the, try, tries to hug the vertical asymptote fast enough. If it stinks too much, then the area will be still huge. But it goes from one, zero to one. It approaches it so fast that the whole area is finite. Area is finite. So converges, converges to three pi over two. That's improper integral type two for you. And finally, type three. Type three. It's also discontinuities, but it's a bit harder. What is the problem with the integral from two to eight? One over x minus six dx. How about that? I also have, I think, three videos, one video for each type from your homework. So I solved your homework and each video has type one, type two, type three. So what is the problem here? I don't see zero, I don't see infinity. Why it's improper? Six, six is a troublemaker and we did not avoid it. So if I stop at five, it's fine. If I start at seven and go to 15, it's also fine, do you see? So we actually were making those nice integrals for you for a while, while actually most of them are not nice. Most of them are very improper, <laughs> very hard to calculate. How would you deal with this? Have a sketch of your interval from two to eight. What is the troublemaker? Six. So I put it on the list and I circle it. This is the troublemaker six. What we're going to do, we're gonna break the integral into two parts. One integral will approach six from the left and another integral will approach six from the right. From the left means 5.99999 and so on. From the right means 6.00001, 6.00001 and so on. So we're going to have two integrals. Integral one is from two to what? Six one over x minus six dx plus integral from six to eight, one over x minus six dx. Those are two improper integrals. However, they are both type two and I can circle six at the top for the first integral and at the bottom for the second. And then I'll just work it the way we learned before. Some people like to write it down like so. It's integral one, I one, plus I two. And they solve them separately, I one and I two. I one will be written as limit integral from two, let's take the first letter of my name, J. J goes to six, one over X minus six DX. J goes to six from the left or from the right? See, check the graph, uh, the sketch from the left, so minus. Solve that. What is the answer for this integral? Natural log, Natural log exactly. So it's gonna be limit J goes to six from the left, ln, let's plug everything right away. J, and then absolute value of J minus Oh yeah, probably we should go back. So it's gonna be J minus six, thank you. See, I'm making mistakes today on purpose to check if you're prepared for the exam. Minus LN, two minus six. You see, absolute value helps in this case because two minus six is negative, but absolute value will make it positive, so log exists. And then it depends on the behavior of first of this situation, log of j minus six, what is happening with j minus six? Six minus six is zero, but we're approaching six from the left. 
So J is actually 5.9, 5.99, 5.99999. That number minus 6 is what? Tiny negative number. And then with absolute value becomes tiny positive number. So we need to know what does log do at the tiny numbers. Graph helps you with that. Graph tells you that logarithmic function looks like so. Tiny numbers are happening close to zero. What does logarithmic function does around zero? It goes to negative infinity. So f of x goes down forever to minus infinity. The smaller the number of the logarithmic function, the higher the output. And you can negative, though. It will be huge negative numbers. And you can check. Plug into ln numbers like 0 0.00001 and see what's going to be. Is it a big number or a small number? And you'll see it's negative and it's small. It's huge and negative. So unfortunately, this guy goes to minus infinity, and even though there is another number there, logarithmic of four, uh, it still doesn't matter. Number is too weak to change the infinity direction. And the second one, as you can guess, will be a limit integral from, let's choose another letter, um, Samantha, Samantha in the classroom, no? S, S goes to six from the right, from S to, 8, 1 over x minus 6, dx. Blah, 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 and we check everything. And the second integral, what do you think? The result will be still the same. It still, still will be a ln of, now it's going to be 6, it will be s minus 6, and still it's going to be small, tiny numbers. So it also goes to minus infinity. So answer. Answer diverges. Diverges. To be honest, if one integral blows up, all of them blow up. And you can blow up to negative infinity as well. The thing is, to, in order to converge both cases, or if there are three of them or five of them, all cases have to give you finite number. Because if you have explosion and there's some part of it gives you a finite answer, it's still an explosion. So it, little numbers do not change the result of the explosion. What I wanted to show you was how the graph looks like, check it out. It's actually pretty awesome. So we have x and y. We have vertical asymptote at six, v a x equals six. And then we're looking at the functions that looks like so. And do you know why they diverged? Be careful with this. This um, graph should hug asymptote and zero. So hugging asymptote, trying to hug asymptote n0. Do you know why they diverged? Because they behave like 1 over x. After all, we're just talking about 1 over x minus 6. 1 over x minus 6. Because there's no powers in it, they are slow. So they are approaching the asymptote too slow. So when we're checking the integral from 2, we were doing it from, let me put it yellow and green, from 2 to 8. Well, it's too far. From 2 to 8, then we're looking at this, i2, this is integral number 2, i2. And here is i1. I'll change the color. They both are too slow because those are logarithmic functions, after all. 1 over x behavior gives you logarithmic functions. Logarithmic functions are slow, so this area will be... Um, infinite. So the total thing diverges. And as you can see, the negative area is bigger than the positive one, so actually everything diverges to minus infinity after all. What do you think about that? Those are the improper integrals for you.